The Council of Trent was an 18 year long series of committee meetings attended mostly by church officials and by theologians. And in principle, they came from all over the world, but in practice, they mostly came from Italy. There were three major purposes for the council that Pope Paul III had called. The first was to answer Protestant criticisms of the church's teachings, which had been getting louder and louder and louder since 1518. The second purpose was to explain exactly where the church disagreed with Protestant ideas about theology and exactly why the church thought Protestants were wrong and the church was right. And along the way, the committee decided that they wanted to reform worship in ways that would make it more appealing and more meaningful to a popular audience and reduce corruption which was a big problem in the medieval and renaissance church. Now, you might think that it would be difficult to get a bunch of church people to agree on fine points of theology, and you would be right if you thought that. In fact, since the Council of Trent was largely made up of representatives who had studied canon law, church law, that is, an awful lot of the participants were actually lawyers, it was even harder than you might imagine to get agreement on all of these issues. In fact, it was so difficult and so contentious that two more popes, Julius III and Pius IV, had to bring in a bunch of sessions during their own reigns in order to finish the committee's business. Now, I know what you're thinking. What about Pope Paul IV? Didn't he come between Julius III and Pius IV? What was he doing? Well. The fact is that uh, Paul IV was not exactly interested in compromise. He wasn't interested in agreeing with other people because he believed very strongly in the authority of the Pope, and he also was a huge fan of the Inquisition. In fact, when he died in 1559, the crowds in Rome were so happy that they took the statue of him in the square, put it on trial for its life chopped off its head, and threw it into the Tiber River. So anyway, the committee meetings had to wait until after he died. He didn't actually contribute then to the Council of Trent, except in holding it up for a while. Now, there are a lot of websites that focus on the theological reforms of the Council of Trent, and not very many that I can find that talk about the social and worship reforms. So that's what I'm going to focus on here. In terms of making the worship experience more meaningful, the church decided that they wanted to enforce a policy of having more churchy sounding music, of having lots of fancy church decorations, and of making sure that all the priests had a minimum education so that they would be able to at least uh, teach actual Catholic doctrine, create a sermon, and understand Latin when they saw it. The council also did its best to eliminate pluralism, which was the practice of taking a bunch of different church jobs and paying somebody else half the salary to do them for you while you collected the other half for doing nothing. There was to be no buying and selling of church jobs. There was an actual uh, stock market for church jobs. There would be no giving your uh, church jobs to your friends and your family. And if you were creating if you wanted your kids to be monks or nuns, you couldn't make them be monks or nuns. You had to wait until they were close to an adult, they had to make their own decision, and then there had to be a waiting period of at least a year, uh, in some cases three years, before their vows could be made. There was also a pretty big crackdown on nuns, led in many ways by Carlo Borromeo, designed not so much to make nuns more holy, but to make them look more respectable. So, for instance, nuns were supposed to dress like nuns and wear nunnish looking clothing. They weren't supposed to rent convents out to rich women. They weren't supposed to live at home. They weren't supposed to wander around outside without a proper escort and they were not supposed to have 
visitors when they were in the convent, or at least they weren't supposed to have very many visitors, and they certainly were not supposed to have parties. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much what the Council of Trent was about. Explain why the Protestants are wrong, explain why the church is right, do a lot of internal institutional housekeeping. <laughs>